Come on in, you guys. Welcome to the show. I'm Brandon Arroyo. This is The Arroyo Show. If it's your first time here, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. What a guest we have for you today. A busy year coming up. Portrayed several roles in new movies here in 2020. The film Sunburn, made in Italy, and the short Magnetic. Please welcome Helena Antonio. How are you today? Thank you. Hello, 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 everyone. I'm very good. I'm quite full of energy. It's a very exciting year for me. So this 2020, as you said, like is bringing so many fresh projects. And despite like the crazy times we are in, I can't complain. So I'm very, very, very happy. And um, yeah, please. You're and it's so to exciting to have a year where you're able to just see project after project come out the way that's happening for you right now. And let's start at the beginning, though. So you grew up between Italy and Spain. When did you first think about getting into acting? And were any members of your family already involved in entertainment? Or were you the first one? Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start from the from the from the ending. So no members in my family is involved uh, with uh, show business with entertainment. So I'm the first one. And um, about when I decided to start into acting. So basically, I I've always been a very very creative person, always being very attracted by art, by any kind of art. And however, I think like my um, so the, the, the very. The, the moment when I really decided, okay, I'm gonna be into acting professionally was uh, when I was about like uh, nine years ago. I was on set with Julio Medem, a uh, Spanish film director. I don't know if you heard about, uh, his most popular film is uh, Lucia y el Sexo, Lucia and the Sex. I don't know if you know it, <laughs> but in Spain is a very, is a very good uh, director. So I was on set with him during three weeks filming and I just, I just thought, okay, I, I just fallen in love with films. I can't do anything else than films, rather than films. That's what I'm gonna do from now on, and and that happened basically. So <laughs> you studied the Meisner technique in London. What is it about Meisner that you enjoyed, and can you speak to the importance of training in the act in the field of acting? Yeah, definitely. So I arrived in London in 2015, so five years ago, and Mesner technique wasn't a really popular technique in Italy and Spain, so it was like something very new for me, but it really changed my um, acting approach, let's say. Um, so I started into this technique and I just discovered how uh, important uh, are like being in the moment, telling, telling the truth, your own personal truth, and uh, just being there where you are, just listening and just replying to, to, what you, to what you see, basically, instead of just following some rules, some like kind of dead rules on a script, just being in the moment. So from that moment, I just started to apply, it, um, uh, just started to, to use this kind of technique in uh, my, in, in the next films I've been in. And it was a kind of, uh, really important discovery. Uh, I just realized the, important, the po importance of freedom on set. So just be free, just uh, be in the moment and uh, whatever you need, it will come after. Uh, so it was a crucial moment, crucial discovery indeed. Well, from there, you jump into the role of Rosa in Arrivederci Rosa. Can you take me into what you were feeling those first couple of days on set and what you will remember from working on that project? Well, Rosa is my very first project. Uh, sorry, but the Chiosa is my very first project in London. And Rosa is my very first character in London. Um, so they were looking for an Italian uh, role, an Italian actress, uh, playing, portraying this kind of character, like very full of life, full of, full of energy, and kind of uh, a bit irrational and slightly, you know, you know like very, very free. So I thought, okay, here I am. I just uh, landed <laughs> here in London. I'm just very, I'm quite, I feel quite close to the Carter. And uh, I remember the freedom of those days as well, because um, there were like a couple of bits in the, in the script. I just improvised. And the director, Flaminia Grazia Dei, uh, an Italian director, she really enjoyed my, um, uh, just my um, kind of uh, changes in the scripts. 
So we just kept them. And uh, the project went very well because it was just going through so many festivals and uh, it won so many awards and nominations. So it was just my first project in London. Well, I have like very, very good memories about it. All right. So a, a more recent project here, Heckle, was released in the United States on Halloween last year. When you look back at taking part in a horror movie that releases on Halloween, that's pretty much a cool thing. What will you remember from your time working on Heckle? Right. I'm going to give you like a very big smile now because I do love horror films. I'm a <laughs> horror films lover. Like I do love them. Since I was a kid, I, I, I used to watch so many horror films when I was a kid. I was like eight, nine. Um, and I got this kind of, um, I, I just loved, loved horror films. So I started making them, doing them, uh, being in them. And uh, it's so much fun. It's so you really feel the adrenaline. You really feel the, the fun doing them and also in Heckle I got the chance to be working with um, Steve Gutenberg which is uh, who is like a qu quite iconic actor uh, also in the US I guess and uh, I remember like uh, um, being on Heckle set it was uh, we created this sort of family so it was a sort of uh, Heckle family at the end I'm still in touch with so many of them and I work with so many talented uh, people professionals so and again like horror films are so much fun to do really I recommend them <laughs> Uh, from there, we go into a really prestigious role that I'm sure many would love to have off of their actor bucket list. You perform La Boheme at the Royal Opera of the, excuse me, the Royal Opera House of London. What do you remember about being selected for that role, and what will stick out with you uh, in your memories when you perf when you think about performing in that theater? Well, I remember I was very surprised because I didn't really expect to be selected for the role because I went to the audition like, okay, let's see what happens. Um, and there were so many talented and beautiful actresses and quite trained in theater. And it was like more like a screen actress. So I thought, I don't know, let, let's see. And then it was when, when my, my agent called me, I was really, really surprised and really, really, of course, really pleased to be on that kind of prestige, prestigious stage. And so I remember it was huge. And during the technical, I remember my hand was uh, terribly shaking while, whilst holding a glass of water in, in the action um, during, the, during the play. It was really shaking because it was so, so... Ooh, I was kind of very emotional during the technical. And then it was very smooth. And I got like, I, I, I still remember the huge of the stage and all the lights it was just, um, wow. So, so important, huge experience for me. Um, yeah, and what an amazing yeah. moment too, to be able to just be in that moment right there where you see the stage, you see the lights and it's just, that's, that's so incredible. I love hearing stories like that. Um, yeah. Okay, so as we begin to wind down the interview, we have what's called the final five. They are the who, what, when, where, and which of what you have going on right now. So the first question is, who do you speak with the most right now? Right now with my sister, my sister uh, came to came from Italy to London yesterday and uh, I'm talking with her so, so much. I really hope I can't stop talking with her because we haven't seen each other for seven months, you know, like from Christmas time and then COVID and everything. So seven months now and we just talk no ending, basically. So what yeah. item do you use the most each day that is not your phone or a computer? Right. I'm going to say like, oh, uh, it's hard to choose. Uh, the first item, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's an item, but it's coconut. It's like a food. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I basically eat coconut in every kind of form, like uh, coconut crisps, uh, coconut oil. And I just love the smell of coconut. And also, um, just forgetting food, uh, music. I, I'm, a, I'm a very, very huge lover of uh, uh, kind of uh, alternative rock and punk. Oh, okay. So, yeah. What yeah. band are you into right now? Uh, right now, I'm loving um, Gaslight Anthem. I don't know if you know them. They like kind of punk rock alternative uh, group, American. Um, so yeah, quite uh, quite different, quite different music. Very cool. When yeah. did you know that you wanted to be in entertainment? When uh, professionally, when I was on set with Julio Medem, indeed, I just. Uh, I fell in love with acting uh, and yeah, with films actually, to be more specific. Where yeah. is your dream vacation? South America. Oh, really? What part of South America? 
Yeah, I really want to discover all South America. I want to I want to go to Argentina, Chile, Peru. Uh, I, I want to go like all the way through South America. And um, finally, which song is your go to for karaoke? I'd say don't ask me to sing. please. <laughs> You're totally fine. I feel you on that one. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my answer. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Alda, for giving us a little bit of your time thank today. You. Really appreciate chatting with you a little bit. And uh, we look forward to seeing these projects that you have coming out. I mean, there's a couple of different ones for everybody to go uh, get a look at. The film Sunburn, Made in Italy, and The Short Magnetic. Some things for people to check out as we make our way through 2020. Helena, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Brendan. Thank you. It was a pleasure.